Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Thursday, the 17th week in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, I will be praying for you, praying for your families, praying for your friends, praying for people who have asked you to pray for them, or people that you are praying for at this time, for whatever intentions those may be. I'll also want to join our country today as we pay our final respects to a great civil rights icon, Congressman John Lewis, as he goes back home to God. Pray for God to bless him and grant him rest and pray for all those who knew him personally, especially his family. I also want to pray for those who are sick from this virus as this virus continues to ravage almost every facet of our nation and our world we pray that god may keep uh, sick people healthy god may protect our healthcare workers god may heal all those in the icus and that god may ultimately give us victory at the end today we have received very poor and disturbing financial and economic news. We pray for God to help us as a country to come together and look for ways to fix not just our economy, but fix everything in between. How we treat each other, how we return back to work, how we face this virus, and how we rebuild our economy again. Also pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray God blessings on you and pray that God may watch over you and keep you safe. Today I invite you to, I invite you to join me in singing Abba Father as our entrance in Abba Father. Let us call on God. Abba. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass and for all the intentions we are bringing to God today, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, may he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing has value. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that we and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold rather fast to those that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. 
this award came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Rise up, be off to the potter's house at the will. There I will give you my message. I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, walking at the will. Whenever the object of clay which he was making turned out badly in his hands, he tried again, making of the clay another object of whatever sort he pleased. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do to you, house of Israel, as this porter has done? Indeed, like clay in the hand of the porter, so are you in my hands, house of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Put not your trust in princes, in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. When his spirit departs, he returns to the earth. On that day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Blessed is he whose, whose help is the God of Jacob. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good in buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his store, his storeroom, both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, good morning and good afternoon to you from wherever you are worshipping with us today. Yesterday I told you about, I began my reflection by reminding you that a lot of things will not go as we planned. They may throw, off, throw us off balance and we must maintain some calm and look carefully, look closely and look, look cleanly. There will be a lifeline. Today, I want to begin my reflection by reminding you to do what is normally counterintuitive at moments like this, when we feel um, under siege, 
we feel like we are under siege. We reduce, we, we seem to cut down on everything else just to struggle for survival. See, our basic instinct to survive will become so dominant that survival becomes everything. Yes, survival is important, it's primary. But yeah, I also want to plan and think about the fact that if I survive, I must have a life to thrive in front of me. Otherwise, I might survive right now and only have another battle for survival again. And so today, I want you thinking about your future. Begin to think about what you hope to be in six months, or in one year, or in two years, or in three. There's nothing wrong with that. Think about that. Begin to build little blocks of how you want to get there. That is how our system begins to fight against being depressed, being broken, because we are already fashioning a life past whatever we're facing right now. So I encourage you, whether you plan to marry, you plan to start a business, you plan to go back to school, you plan to finish your degree, you whatever it is you plan to do, start thinking about building little blocks right now. Yeah, it's okay to focus a lot of your energies on survival, but you can't focus all of your energies on survival. Think about how you intend to thrive post whatever pandemic and whatever the consequences of this pandemic, you know, have brought to us. So that's something I want you thinking about today. Think into your future. Now, let us go back to our reading for today. I like to begin with the gospel reading. The Lord Jesus projects another parable, this time of a fisherman. And when I was growing up, me and my brothers back in Nigeria, this is something my friends, something we did. So I know how what Jesus is talking about here. I, I, I can still do fishing with the net right now, even though I've not done it for a long time. But it's something I can still do. So I understand this parable so very well because it's something I did. You know, um, when we were young and we go fishing, at times you even cast your net and inside your net you have snakes, you have all kinds of, you know, sea reptiles and so it's not just a fish, you know, that you, that you come up with. So, yeah, this can be um, a very tedious process to, um, you, you, you pick up stones and pieces of wood and you pick metals that are all kinds of things you know trash that is in the sea or in the river then you come back and then slowly you begin to pick whatever you need that you don't need and you pick and throw back you know and you pick and you, you you take what you need you know your fish that's all you care about and it's not every fish that you take home to so this is um it, it's very it, it reminds me of my my life as a kid growing up in Nigeria. Now, I, I like to um, focus on what the Lord is trying to say here. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea. So, the kingdom of heaven is like a net. I think Jesus is speaking about his church. So, the church is the drag net. So, the church is the drag net. It's home for saints, sinners. It's home for everyone. That's what it's supposed to be. The church is supposed to be the home for saints. In fact, the home for sinners, because there are no saints, the home for sinners who are striving to become saints. That's what the church is supposed to be. That means it's supposed to have people of every kind. Everyone, black, white, Asian, male, female, gay, straight, everyone young, old, rich, poor. It's supposed to be the home for everyone who wants to be there. Now, the church is a dragnet. You realize it is not the dragnet that was doing the discrimination, that was speaking and choosing who should enter the bucket and who should be cast out. The dragnet doesn't do that. The church cannot do that. The dragnet's job is just to catch as many people as possible. 
There's only one who can make that judgment that, yeah, this one will go home and this one will go back. And that's God. It's his angels who has uh, who have um, those terms of reference given to them as their job specification. Our job specification as a church is to gather as many people as possible in this church. And you realize every one of us is like a fish, God forbid, or like a snake, or like any other metal or object that you that you, you pick, you know, when you cast this net. Now you realize we are not the ones making the discrimination. One fish doesn't say to the other fish, hey, no, no, you don't look like you belong here. You don't you're not good enough to be here. You know, the, the fish don't say that. That that's not their job. <laughs> so but sometimes that's where we find ourselves. Whether as a church, we find ourselves doing God's work or doing the work that is not ours. It belongs to his angels. And the angels have specific instructions by the Almighty God. And the job is meant to be done at the end, not now. So, so this is a very instructive parable. It's a very instructive parable for the church, but also for each of us. That as a draft net, the church's role is to bring in people of every kind and make sure that net is full. That's what that is, like the miraculous catch. So make sure that net is full of people of every kind. And then it's up to God to be the one to send angels to discriminate or to pick and choose or to do the selection. It's not ours, not the church, not you, not the Pope, not me, no one. Because one fish or one object cannot say to the other object, you, are the, you don't belong here or you are not good enough. So each time you and I or the church sit in that judgment, we are arrogant, taking, playing God, taking God's role. I, I want to say this. An action, an action, it doesn't matter what, an action is neither good or bad. All human actions are mostly, are mostly in different actions. It's only the intent, it's only the intent that makes the action evil, the motive. And that motive is never known to anyone. Now people might say, why, come on, you mean killing somebody is, is not evil? No, killing somebody is not always evil. Because if I kill someone out of self-defense, it's not evil. I didn't commit a sin. Yeah, it's sad that someone died, but I did not commit a sin. If I kill someone out of self-defense. Now, if I kill someone by accident, say for instance, I was wheeling back my car, I didn't even know someone was behind me, and I killed someone, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a sad experience. But that's not the sin. That's not wrong. It's not murder. So, so it's not every human action that is bad. And not every human action that is good. So the fact that I go out and give all my money to the poor doesn't mean that that makes me a righteous person. Yeah, those are all good deeds. But my motive, if the motive is not pure and it's not sin, then my good action doesn't make me a good person. Even though it's a good action, and so fundamentally, all human action must be presumed indifferent. It's a motive that defines the action as good or virtuous or as bad or evil. And the motive is known to God and God alone. Only God knows and the doer of the deeds that knows what that is. And that's why it's so impossible for us, whether as a church or as individual people, to sit on the judgment seat and say who belongs here and who does not. It, 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 we cannot. Because I could be condemning myself just by that very action. And so Jesus says to us here, that job belongs to God. Now, your job and my job every day and the job of everyone in that drag net, in that church, is to do what follows. In that in this parable says 
Do you understand these things? That means, do you understand what I'm telling you? That your job is not to judge. Your job is not... Do you understand that? He, he made this whole thing because this is not something that we clearly understand. Because sometimes we find ourselves doing these things, you know, uh, maybe without understanding or without intent. Or just doing that because we haven't taught to do them. But Jesus wants us. So this question is also for you. Do you understand your role? Do you understand your job? Do you understand your place in the church? And if your answer is yes, Jesus added, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven. So the question I want to ask you now, what efforts are you doing to be instructed on the principles of the kingdom of heaven? What efforts are you doing? Are you instructing yourself? Are you offering yourself or availing yourself the opportunity to be instructed in the kingdom, in those principles that make us fit for the kingdom? Because that is, above all, that is the, the underlying factor that determines whether we go into the bucket or we get thrown out, cast out. So the, the thing that, that, that defines everything is that we are taking the time to train ourselves and to act based on our training on the principles of the kingdom. And, and very, very quickly, those principles, you find them in the Beatitudes. You also find them on the final judgment. Jesus makes that point very, very clear. In the final judgment, he tells us, all the things that he is going to check us on. And in the Beatitudes, he tells us what makes us blessed. That means what makes us uh, conform to the, the basic principles of God's kingdom. So I encourage you, you ask yourself this question. No one can answer for the other. You answer for yourself, and I will answer for myself. Am I training myself or availing myself of the opportunity to be trained on the principles of God's kingdom and am I fulfilling and carrying out my role based on what those teachings offer me if I do this and if you do this trust me we will meet again even if we don't meet here on this side we will meet again on the other side because we would have done our job very very well unfortunately with this right he has, now there's a, there's a chance to be remade to do it again and to do overs but, but once um, my life is over, once your life is over then we, we no longer have control, that will be dependent on God's mercy, we pray dear friends that God may help us and that God may bless us to focus on what is important what is in our lane to learn the principles of the kingdom of God and to carry out our role from what we have learned, as always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you very much and the Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready to help. He's always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask. So let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the slightest and the smallest of causes. For the church who dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, that the church may play its role in the lives of people, the role of gathering God's people into his band, into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations enslaved by sinful systems of oppressions and terror, that God may give us the courage to respond, making sure we seek the rights and freedoms of all people, especially the right to worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who are tormented by fear of impending harm or danger and are worried 
by what the future might bring. That God may give us courage to think and to plan our lives beyond the impending moment and its stresses of this moment, believing that our God will bring us over this issue. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young men and women, considering the call to the priesthood or the religious life, especially as a response to the many priests and sisters that we have lost to this virus. That when our churches are open, we will have confidence and faith that young people are answering the call to be ordained or be professed for the ministry of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those in critical care, for those who care for them, for those who have died, and for those who grieve their loss, pray especially for Congressman John Lewis, who is laid to rest, that God may bless their services, that we may be living testimonies and continuation of their mission and their battles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers, for those who need God's intervention or assistance at this time, especially those who are in desperate conditions, that they may feel the peace and calm that the Holy Spirit brings. That they may listen to God's guidance and direction for the way forward. We pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today. That God may bless them. And that God may grant them many more years in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need by giving us your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed I God, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made it become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I God, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, this most secret mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal happiness in the next. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, 
we declare your glory as with one voice we are praying holy 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 god god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy O god the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, your servant John Lewis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son, in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him O god almighty father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. 
Now let us ask for the grace of spiritual communion. Most loving, most compassionate, most gracious God. For all of your children who are still unable to attend Mass physically and receive your body and your blood. We ask for this grace of spiritual communion. That you who know their spiritual anxiety, spiritual needs, spiritual aspirations and hopes, O oh God, may nurture and fulfill every one of them by the spiritual effect of this communion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. My dear friends, before the final blessing, take a moment to express my thanks to all of you and to wish you a very blessed day. So I like to remind you that you are still the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing, We are companions on the journey. We are companions on the journey. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we pay is the hope we share. For we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other. No longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care by the strength of those